It helps us to identify with the past, with the Greeks and the Romans, with the crumbled mud brick cities of Ur. Each of us knows that our bodies are going to fall apart. Why not our cities too? A thousand years ago, six and a half billion people called this planet home. By the early 21st century, more than half of them lived in cities. Now, those cities are unrecognizable. After maybe a thousand years or so, the scene behind me would be very, very different. There'd be very little evidence of buildings, very little evidence of the activities of man. What we would see would be a jungle of vegetation. The future of cities in a life after people can be best imagined by looking to the past. This is Mineta Street in Greenwich Village. Most New Yorkers might come here and wonder why it curves like this. It curves because once upon a time there was a stream here, Mineta Brook. There were more than 40 streams on Manhattan Island. All flowing down and carrying the rainwater down to the sea. So what happens today? The rain falls, the snow melts, but it flows right along the street and down into that storm drain there. If there weren't people here anymore, there will be no one here to maintain the sidewalks and maintain the streets. They start to crumble up, they start to break apart. Trees will come back, vegetation will come back, and eventually the hydrological cycle would reestablish itself. And who knows, maybe Mineta Street might once again become Mineta Brook. Using historic maps and computer modeling, scientists with the Manhattan Project are rediscovering what Manhattan Island looked like when explorer Henry Hudson first sailed around its shores in 1609. Here we are in Foley Square, the administrative center of New York City, and the location of the famous courthouse you see on TV. This place hasn't always had such colossal buildings and stony streets. Once upon a time, 400 years ago, the Collect Pond was here, the fresh water source for New York City, right behind me. There was a stream that drained down to the Hudson River shore, another stream to the East River, and there was this beautiful pond that was nestled in an amphitheater of hills. So what would happen if all the people were to disappear? The buildings, they would tumble down. The soil would start to reform, trees would start to grow out of them. They would become the new hills, the new amphitheater around this place. Nature would reestablish itself and slowly bring this place back into the green heart of what it means to be here on planet Earth. New York City, like the rest of the planet, has changed radically. The transformation is most shocking in Times Square, as the once beating heart of the city is silenced by nature's onslaught. It's 10,000 years after people. Could it be possible, after only 10 millennia, that humanity has vanished without a trace?
Human scientists once predicted that our history and culture would live on through our radio and television broadcasts, which carry on through the universe toward the infinite. Perhaps to be tuned in by an intelligent species on a distant planet. Some people think that there's an expanding shell of radio and television from Earth. Expanding outward, alerting the universe, here we are, and this is our culture. Unfortunately, recent calculations by, of all people, the SETI, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence Group, has shown that all of this dissipates within one or two light years into noise. If this is true, our signals won't even make it out to the nearest star beyond the sun. So what will remain 10,000 years after people to tell the story of the once great civilizations that walked the earth? Iron corrodes, concrete crumbles, wood and paper decay. Still, some of what man built on Earth remains. The most colossal of our stone structures, like the Great Wall of China, have aged like mountains, subject to erosion, but at such slow time scales they will still be recognizable in some form for eons. The Great Pyramid at Giza is so massive that it lasts long enough to be swallowed up by the desert sands. The Hoover Dam, built to be as tough as the canyon walls around it, is one of the last man-made structures still standing. But now, thousands of years in the future, Earth is about to be visited by the last of the great collapses. It's the environment that eventually wins. Earthquakes, sandstorms, rain. But there are a few exceptions. I would have to say that Mount Rushmore, carved out of solid granite in an ecologically stable place, the only enemy it has is wind-driven pellets of rain. I think that Mount Rushmore may be around 100,000 years, possibly 200, possibly even in time to be looked at in awe by the earliest of our replacements. And who or what might those replacements be? Perhaps chimpanzees might somehow make the leap. But we have to consider this. Some scientists believe that it's easy for nature to bring animals up to a clever level where they might use tools, they might become masters of their environment. But the leap to being able to stare at the sky and imagine a cosmos, to be able to contemplate yourself, to be able to contemplate your own role in the Earth, this may be a leap that was a sheer accident for humanity. In which case, you're not talking about a complete recovery. You're talking about a planet that may continue, but nobody to talk about it, nobody to think about it. If Earth's four and a half billion years of existence were condensed into 24 hours, the passage of 10,000 years would be a fraction of a second. Man's time on the planet so far would be about half a minute long. So, like an abandoned village on a global scale, the Earth will move on without us. There was life before people. There will be life after people. <laughs>